everyone this afternoon. My name is Gail Brown and I'm executive director of the Phoenix Office of Arts and Culture and this is a wonderful occasion where we're gathered together here for today. I want to thank you for being with us at Pueblo Grande Museum which is of course a national historic treasure, um, a, certainly a treasure for the Phoenix Parks and Recreation Department. First, though, before we get started, let's have a round of applause for Tony Duncan and Canyon Records. That music was extraordinary. Thank you so much for being with us today. So we're here to celebrate a great project, partnerships, and many years of planning to make this inspiring place more visible, beautiful, and certainly easier for the public to reach. Our good late friend, Roger Lidman, former director of Pueblo Grande and public art director at Lebo, began talking about creating this entrance and pathway 25 years ago. And with the help and support of many partners, we're here to dedicate the completion of that good idea, a public art project entitled Passage by artist Brad Goldberg. On behalf of the Office of Arts and Culture, I'd like to thank our partners in this project, Katherine Sorensen, Director of the Water Services Department, and Inger Erickson, the Parks and Recreation Department Director, for their support. And also thanks to Nicole Armstrong Best, Director of the Pueblo Grande Museum. There are many other people here to thank, and I'm grateful that District 8 Councilwoman Kate Gallego and Arts and Culture and Commission Chair Janet Trailer, Parks Board Chair Roger Peck, uh, and Roger uh, and um, Don Apple could be with us to share this event and to share our gratitude with you. So please join me in welcoming Councilwoman Kate Gallego. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be here today. I represent the Gateway area on the Phoenix City Council, and now we have a gateway befitting the Pueblo Grande landmark in our community. So it is a real celebration of the work of many people who are here today who work together to incorporate art, architecture, and landscape design to enhance an already wonderful place and make it so much easier for people to reach it. It connects our modern Phoenix with its deep past, a wonderful opportunity for us to learn about why Phoenix is here, the Hohokam canals that gave birth to our city and really made Phoenix what it is today. This landmark is the, the number one place to learn about that. And now we will have a landmark entrance that will help welcome people here and make it so much easier for visitors on our light rail or people who are just driving by on, our way, on the way from the airport to see and remember that Pueblo Grande has to be a must stop on their trip to Phoenix. This is an area where the city of Phoenix is investing a lot. We're excited about our gateway community and its potential. Uh, we just received $10 million to revitalize the canal path that will culminate in the entrance we are here to dedicate. So it's part of a, a bigger effort to say this is one of the most special places in our community. We want everyone who visits Phoenix, whether you're born here, go to school here, or are on vacation, to say we have a must stop at the Parks Department and we want uh, to celebrate our history, our roots and just making it so much more beautiful as you enter, I think it will attract the kind of attention that this facility has long deserved. And it, this is something that's been a long time in the making. Uh, it's a wonderful testament to the legacy of Roger, our, uh, who ran this facility. I got to meet some of his family at the celebration of his life, and this really is his legacy, so it's wonderful that we can continue to celebrate the leadership of Pueblo Grande, even though we lost part of our Phoenix family this year. I'm very glad that he got to see what it would look like, those plans, and celebrate that. And I think he is with us here today. 
maybe Tony's music was, was the appropriate celebration of Roger's legacy as well. I also owe a debt of gratitude to our volunteer commissioners who made this happen. Thank you to both our Parks Board and our Arts and Culture Board, as well as our Historic Preservation folks. A lot of people care about this facility. We have great advocates for, the, for archaeology. I, I see Dutch here who has been a, a passionate lobbyist for archaeology in our community. So many people who have stepped up and said, we have a treasure at Pueblo Grande and the City of Phoenix needs to invest in that. Our city departments have worked very hard across five different departments to make that happen, this happen as well. And they've had great partners from the private sector. Thank you to APS for being a wonderful partner and graciously paying to underground a power line that crossed the new path to the museum. A complicated project, but the wow factor makes it all worth it on days like this as you enter. I also want to thank Brad Goldberg and the team at Smith Group and Floor Associates for the beautiful design that we are celebrating today and the many workers from Brycon Construction and Valley Rain who made this design a reality. Once the project is done and the equipment has been hauled away, it's easy to forget how many hands helped build our city and projects like this one. So let's take a moment to thank our City of Phoenix team and the private sector team who came together to make this a reality. It's also very timely that we have this project which looks out onto our light rail system. It is one of our fastest growing modes of transportation and one that will get, be getting even busier. Just yesterday, the city of Phoenix voted at the city council level to dramatically accelerate building light rail. So we'll be hoping to see more and more people riding our rail to destinations such as this one, getting off and coming this way. And as we build that system, there'll be $23 million in more funding for the arts as well. It, the biggest investment we've seen in quite a while in arts and culture. So more to come from this partnership between light rail and the arts and culture programs at the city of Phoenix. I had the pleasure of chairing the campaign for Proposition 104, which was the campaign to expand our transportation system throughout the valley. And I'm looking forward to the continued partnership as it go forward. It's an exciting time for our entire city, but particularly for the Gateway area and Pueblo Grande. So thank you for being with us here today as we celebrate this milestone. Thank you, Councilwoman Gallego, and thank you for your very um, dedicated and uh, consistent support for arts and culture in our city. We do appreciate it greatly. Now I'd like to welcome to the podium the chair of our Arts and Culture Commission, Janet Trailer. She has a few words for you as well. Hello, everybody. On behalf of the Phoenix Arts and Culture Commission, and the Office of Arts and Culture, thank you for joining us for the dedication of passage. Thanks to strong support from the community and our city council, the public art program in the city of Phoenix has been building projects that improve our city for the past 30 years. That's quite a legacy. So thank you, Councilwoman Gallego. This project could not have been done without your dedicated support. We appreciate your understanding of how arts and culture animates and energizes our city. Bringing this beautiful work to fruition could not have been accomplished without many talented and dedicated individuals. Thanks to artist Brad Goldberg and to his team for the thoughtful design. I would also like to acknowledge the City of Phoenix staff members, Elizabeth Grahalis and Ruth Spear. Elizabeth managed this project for the Office of Arts and Culture and Ruth who is with the Street Transportation Department, worked alongside Elizabeth in carrying the project to completion. And a final note of thanks, early in the project, two citizens, Craig Zeibel and Tim Blincall, are you here today? Step forward to donate the saguaros that surround us here. So our thanks to them and to the Pueblo Grande Auxiliary for helping to make this happen. This project remind us, reminds us of the many hands and the diverse jobs involved in building our city's public art and architecture. We appreciate everybody for being here, community members, 
and all those that have gathered here today. Now I would like to introduce Roger Peck, who is chair of the Parks Board. Roger. <clears throat> Thank you, Janet. Can you hear me? Yes or no? no? My wife says she can hear me in Tucson, and I don't have to have a microphone working here. Um, I've got some notes here I'm going to refer to, but I'd like to speak a little bit more from the heart. Uh, on the way down here, I was stopped at this turn light there at 44th and uh, Washington, and for the first time in many, many years, I've lived here for 35 years, I said, wow, that's where the museum is. I mean, it's terrific, it stands out, it's notarized, it's, it's just lovely, and if you haven't had the luxury of walking down this path and just standing under this beautiful portal, please do that and enjoy it. Uh, this park really has quite a history, and of course it goes back to the 1500 years ago when the Hoholcom Indians lived here for over a thousand years. And much of the history of our city, the city of Phoenix, really comes from the rebirth of the Phoenix and the rebirth of that civilization back in the 1860s when we had uh, architects of the new canal system. The original name, by the way, of Phoenix, for some of you that uh, are historians, was Pumpkinville. And it was because Jack Swinnell and his group pump, uh, put pumpkins all along the riverbeds and they grew and that's how our original name came about. But the park was dedicated back in uh, 1929, I believe. It was gifted back in 24. And in 1935, we built the museum. And the museum was built right on site with uh, adobe block and scavengered parts at a cost of $14.95. That was the cost of the box of nails that they had to use. So clearly, they brought the project in under budget. There's some people here I'd like to recognize, of course, many years ago, Roger Lindman, the former administrator of Pueblo Grande, and Ed LeBeau conceptualized this project as part of the Parks and Recreation Department's master plan. The project involves many stakeholders playing multiple roles. I'd like to thank the city staff and the public and private partners who made this possible. The PGM Auxiliary, specifically Barb and Dan Zurich, who championed the project the Salt River Maricopa Indian community for their support, particularly Shane Anton, Angela Garcia Lewis, who helped review the plans and develop the signage. The city arborist in the Parks and Recreation Department, Richard Atkins, who helped with this donation of trees. Just look around you, this is all brand new. All of these plantings here are magnificent. The state historic preservation officer, Jim Garrison, who provided guidance and approval of what we're seeing today. And the actual construction portion which we'd like to thank several groups here who worked to make this possible. Uh, Bryken Construction Company, Bob Fisher and Kevin Fries, Smith Group, JJR Landscape Architect, Rick Jones, Valley Rain Construction, Tony Viola, Floor Associates, Chris Brown, Desert Archaeology, Connie Darby and Kathy Henderson, and appreciate the artist and flute music by Tony Durkin. Matter of fact, when we talk about uh, archaeology, the city of Phoenix was the first city in the United States to have a full-time archaeologist. And back in 1935, uh, we actually hired uh, someone, and we've had the opening of this museum now for the last 80 years, and we can continue to have an archaeologist on staff. Uh, the project could not be done without the assistance of the Pueblo Grande Auxiliary Group. Uh, it started with a handful of folks, and now I think uh, we're probably over 250 volunteers. Uh, the funding that they bring to help uh, operate the budgets here and the museum is remarkable. It's been millions of dollars over many years. And I'd like to invite Don Apple up to come up, the president of the association, to share a few words. Don? Thank you. I want to welcome you on behalf of the staff the board and the members of the Pueblo Grande Museum Auxiliary. We look forward to this new chapter in the history of the Pueblo Grande Museum, working with our new director and with this beautiful new entranceway. You've heard pretty much about the uh, project, so I was going to tell you a little bit about the history of the auxiliary. The auxiliary began first in 1977 when a few people got together and decided what they could do to volunteer for the museum. 
It was also the year of our first, um, our first fundraiser, which at that time was a small arts market that has grown into our yearly Indian market. It started with 45 booths and in its height in 1992 grew to 600 artists and over 20,000 people. And this year, on the second weekend of December, we'll be celebrating our 40th anniversary Indian market here on the property. In 1980, we opened a small limited gift shop in the auxiliary or in the uh, museum. Uh, and that has grown into what I consider to be one of the finest outlets for American Indian art in the Southwest. Over the past 40 years, we have given over $2 million to the museum. We've been instrumental in the putting in the Hohokam House exhibit on the uh, pathway, the Diggit Gallery, major funding for the main exhibition gallery, the yearly changing exhibits. Our volunteers do a number of things, including leading tours for both adults, as well as an incredible, incredible schools program that we have. Our collection volunteers do amazing work with uh, both interpreting and, uh, and outlining our collections, our Basque archaeology collections. And our museum store volunteers allow a wonderful outlet for American Indian art. Other events that we have include our monthly lecture series on the first Wednesday of each month. It's a free lecture series, which is basically about archaeology and history. Our rug auction, the first weekend in November, allows one of the few outlets for textile artists from both the state of Arizona and the state of New Mexico. And this year, again in December, we'll have our 40th Indian Market, where we'll be in one of the best outlets for local American Indian artists. We also support the museum in their many projects and many days throughout the year. As with many nonprofits all over the country, we're in a period of change with many more organizations competing for an ever smaller amount of donations, volunteers, and grants. As we enter into our 40th year, the board is working to continue to improve the structure that will hopefully carry us on for the next 40 years. And we encourage you to join us in this pursuit. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank, thanks to all of you for your lovely comments and, um, I don't know, adding so much um, grace, I think, and beauty to this celebration. So we're going to have a party in a minute, but before we do that, uh, a, couple, uh, no, a couple of other quick acknowledgments and announcements. Uh, I want to call out Balt School District Board Member Chanel Poe. She's here in our audience. It's so nice to see you here. And also want to thank Laureen Montero and Laura Alexand Andrews here at the Pueblo Grande Museum for their generosity, all their help uh, through this process. We really appreciate that. But I would be so remiss if I did not ask the artist of this project to step forward for a round of applause. Please, Brad, Brad Goldberg. <laughs> Extraordinary work, what amazing vision. Thank you so much for what you've created here in this space. Um, we are going to, in a minute, uh, journey into the community room, right, Elizabeth? For refreshments provided by Brycon. Brycon, thank you. But before we do, we'd like to invite everyone to journey this way to the portal. And we are going to cut the ceremonial ribbon and have a chance also to just enjoy this space before we celebrate as a community. Again, thanks so much for being here this afternoon. <laughs>